Hello and welcome to this presentation on connectors. In this presentation we are going to take a look at the spring type of connectors. My name is Mike Fiedler. I am a designated support specialist with Autodesk and I will be working with you on today's demo. So as far as the problem setup, the description that we have is a horizontal beam that's 30 inches long. The width is a half an inch, the height is three quarters of an inch. You can see that it's fixed at one end and then it is supported at the other end with a spring that has a stiffness of 54 pounds per inch. And then there's a distributed load of five pounds per inch applied along the top length of the beam as shown in the figure here. Uh, the modulus of elasticity that will be utilized is 30E6 and Poisson's ratio is 0.3. And the objective is for us to find the deflection at point A and also the force in the spring. I will give you that the model is rather simple. Uh, at the same time, that means that this is something that is readily able to be validated with a hand calculation. So instead of just taking some big, maybe fancy looking model and attaching some springs to it and saying, there you go. Uh, what we'd like to do in this one is present something that certainly you can back out an answer for just to illustrate uh, or confirm with yourself that the program is doing what it should be doing. You're getting the results that you should get. Uh, it Really a validation example um, it would be another way to put it. So at the end of this all, uh, what are our expected results? Our theoretical displacement is minus, we'll say, a half of an inch and the force should be approximately uh, minus 27 pounds force. And for this model, I am going to use the Autodesk Inventor Nastran program, and we're gonna construct this all uh, from scratch. So we will start with a sketch of the line, which we will convert to a beam, and then we will pull up the connectors and we will add our spring in for that. So let's go ahead over to Inventor and take a look at how we're going to do this. Okay. So I mentioned that in Inventor, we're just going to create everything from scratch. So just going File, New, I'm going to tell Inventor that I'm creating a new part. And I'll just go ahead and say Create. And from there, we'll just go ahead and start a sketch. And we'll make that sketch, say, on the XY plane. And the sketch line that we're going to add is what will become our beam. So I'm just going to start it at the origin. And we'll just draw a length of line in the horizontal direction. And that beam length is going to be 30 inches long. So let's go ahead and dimension that. We'll make that 30 inches if I have my fingers on the correct keys. Okay, so there we go. There's our 30 inch long line. Now I'm envisioning that we will ultimately constrain this end. And this end over here is where our spring will be. Remember with connectors that we can connect them between vertexes of geometry or points that we add into uh, our sketches or our models or a combination of the two. So let's go ahead and create a point so that we have somewhere else to attach the end point of our spring. So one end of the spring is going to attach to the beam. The other end of the spring is just grounded. So we'll attach that end of the spring to this point. Let's go ahead and dimension that. I'm going to say that's also 30 inches away. And then we'll make the spring about five inches uh, in height. It's rather arbitrary. I'll see a little bit more about that later. Well, basically, uh, we're going to enter in what the spring stiffness is, right? So it's not necessarily using uh, the coil diameter and the material, uh, all that sort of things, all those sorts of things about the spring that determine its stiffness. The stiffness is purely a, a mathematical input. So. Uh, the length here, again, is, is relatively arbitrary. Okay, uh, at that point, I think we can say finish sketch. And I think we have everything we need for us to move over to the Nastran environment. I'm just going to turn off the dimension visibility before we do so. And then I'm going to go environments, and I'm going to select the Autodesk Inventor Nastran. All right, so coming into Nastran, again, this will be our beam, and then we will attach a spring. So let's start with the beam, and what we're going to do is create a new idealization. 
So when I come into idealizations, we're going to tell it that we are working with some sort of line element. And the line element type that I want is going to be a beam element. And then I'm going to go into cross section. And I can define what that cross section is. So in the cross section definition, we should have bar. And let's give it our dimensions 0.75 inch and 0.5 inch. Okay. So, all right, when I come back out to the idealization screen, I'm going to say that I want to choose the associated geometry, and that allows me to select the entities of that sketch line. And we'll say OK. So now that sketch line is underneath that idealization and is identified as a beam. At that point, we can generate the mesh. It'll just generate X number of elements along the length of that line to create beam segments. We can see there's now 27 nodes along the length of that beam and 26 elements. One of the other things that we need to do is to uh, define what the material is. So I'm going to right click on the material and we'll say edit. And in the material properties, we're going to go ahead and define the modulus elasticity as 30E6. And we'll define Poisson's ratio as 0.3. Let's say OK. That was the material properties that were given to us. One of the other things that I can do is I can right click on elements here. And we can say display cross section. So when I do a display cross section, we can see what the dimension of our geometry is, or uh, the, the shape of our geometry, so we can see that we have the three quarter inch dimension vertically and the half inch dimension horizontally. So that is what we had anticipated it to be. So I think that is good as far as the setup. Uh, let's go ahead and define the connector next. So I'm going to go into connectors. And for the connector, we're going to change it to a spring type. And with the spring type of connector, what we're going to do is select one endpoint of our connector. That's going to go right there. And then I need to select another point on the connector. That'll be right there. And you can see that it draws a spring. Now, again, for the spring, we're not defining the number of coils, the diameter of the coils, anything like that. We're just entering in uh, either a damping coefficient or a stiffness. So for the stiffness, um, we are going to assign a stiffness there of 54. And I am going to go out uh, and we'll make a change to this very shortly. Uh, I should show that uh, if we click on, on advanced options, we can define the stiffness in different directions and, and rotations, right? Essentially X, Y, Z and rotation X, Y, Z or, or the damping coefficients um, in in these directions. Uh, if we look right here, the coordinate system is currently set to part number one. And part number one is my beam, right? Um, so right now, um, the stiffness that I just defined, K1 aligns with the x-axis, K2 would be Y, so on and so forth. So really by me typing in K1 here, uh, I'm defining an x-direction stiffness of the spring. Uh, which is not really what I want. We want the direction stiffness in uh, aligned with the y-axis. So one thing that I could do is I could clear that out and I could enter in the value right there. Or we can make a small change to the model where we add an additional coordinate system in. And I'm going to go ahead and do that just to show you uh, what that looks like, how we might do that. So let's say OK to that for the moment. So let's go ahead and make that change. And the way that I'm going to do that is right click on coordinate systems. I'm going to say I need a new uh, coordinate system. We'll assign it a name. Let's say it's the spring coordinate system. And you can see here it's looking for an origin. And then I'm going to define some point on a new local XZ plane. And then I need to define what the uh, Z axis is, right? 
So let's say that I define this point as my origin. Let me go ahead and click it, the top of the spring and the end of the beam where they join. Okay, and then the next thing that I need is a point on the XZ plane. So I have two more points I could choose from. So if I use this as a point on the XZ plane, and then lastly I use this to define the Z axis, right, so my XZ plane would be this, then what that means is the X axis then would be aligned with the spring. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say point on XZ plane, and I'll choose this end point right here. And then for my third point again, so now it knows between these three points that defines my XZ plane. So I can leave this as my point on the Z axis, which means this is my X axis. So that's exactly what I was going for. Point on the Z axis. Let's select that point. All right. And there you can see there's our mini axis. So now the X aligns with the spring. The Z is off in the direction. Remember, we defined a point on the Z axis. So the Z axis is headed down that way. And then Y is orthogonal to that, of course. All right. So that way now my my x-axis of this new local coordinate system, this spring coordinate system, uh, is aligned with the axis of the spring itself. So let's say OK. All right, we're going to go in and edit that connector. All right, click on the connector, say Edit, and there's the stiffness. So currently K1 is 54, and it's saying K1, or the, the x-axis, all I'm going to do here is change the coordinate system to use the spring, my new, the, the coordinate system that I defined or called uh, spring. And let's say OK to that. All right. So that tells the program now that the, the stiffness is in that direction, the axial direction of that spring. Let's go ahead and add our constraints. Quite simple. We're just going to select the end of the beam. And we'll select the free end of the spring. Let's give it some name. Let's call that fixed. And we'll say OK. All right, I think at that point we are pretty close to done. We do need to define our load. So let's go into load. And this was a distributed load. And this is following the global coordinate system, part one. So in this case, I want it to be in the minus y direction and it is a uh, minus five pounds force per inch. So let's say minus five. And, whoop, I need to select the entities. There we go. All right. And we can see that there are forces. Remember, it's a distributed load, and it's showing indicators uh, at either end of the, the beam for me. That's just a visual. Uh, we can certainly change that if that's going to give people question. Let's go back and edit. I'll show you how to change that. Uh, I can say to turn on the preview of them. And then the way that I do that is I adjust the density. And you can see as I adjust the density, it shows more along the length of the, the beam. This is just visual purposes. So it would have been fine without me changing this because it already knows that it's a distributed load by the fact that that's the type of load I chose. Uh, but visually now by adjusting the density, I think that removes any question for anybody that might be reviewing this that maybe isn't very familiar with the program. So let's go ahead and say okay to that. Uh, I think we are about ready to run this analysis. I'm going to make one more change, and that is we'd like to get the force in the spring. Uh, and that's not something that is output by default. So the way we're going to do that is we need to right click on the analysis and, and edit the setup parameters here. And all we're going to do is click on force uh, to tell the program that we would like that information output as well. Let's say OK. So at that point now, I think we have everything all set up, and we can just run the analysis. Yep. Of course, I need to give it some sort of name. Let me get into the appropriate directory. And I'm going to call it uh, connector spring. OK. So we had about, about 20 some elements for the beam and one for the spring. So obviously it's a, a very quick analysis to run. 
Uh, and at this point, we can compare our uh, displacements and our force in the spring. And as far as the, the setup was concerned, they gave us what we were looking for on a displacement, which was about 0.499. And there we can see uh, we have arrived at that solution, 0.499. And then the force in the spring, I believe, was supposed to be around 26, 27. So the way to do that is we go to the pull down menu. We say that we want other. And then that would be uh, the force and x. All right, and there is the minus 27 pounds force result for the spring. So everything checks out in that model. We set it up correctly. And uh, I guess the only other thing that I would mention is if the spring results are obscured, you can go into uh, the object visibility pull down menu. You might need to, to disable connectors. Sometimes it's, it's obscured by whatever the connector is, uh, the visual of that connector. So you can always disable that if need be. Um, but that's all there is to it. And uh, hopefully that was informative. So. Thanks for watching.